great. So we'll take one more question. Final question. Go for it. Yeah. Um, yeah, just one question for Gregor Robinson there with regards to Vancouver 2020, real city in the world. Can you tell me who decides it? Who's there, who's there now? And are you going to make it? <laughs> that, that's a good question. So there are a number of different uh, organizations evaluating Greenest City. Uh, we actually had The Economist do uh, a round of this globally a couple of years ago, and we ended up right, basically just, uh, just behind San Francisco in North America. They didn't aggregate the continents, so we at the time were second in North America, but uh, that basically based on their metrics, put us in the top 10 globally, but the, fir the first five were all in, uh, in Scandinavia. Those are the cities that would be leading the charge. So we, uh, when we looked at it and, and uh, adopted the plan, well, there was actually, Mike sat on, a, uh, on the Greenest City Action Team that looked at how different, what different cities are doing uh, to measure their impact on environment and, and to look at the positive side of this as well and, and in terms of economic opportunity. And we put that original uh, plan together, which was then tested and, and, uh, and refined by a much broader group. There ended up being 35,000 people in Vancouver that, that helped shape that plan uh, one way or another through all the different engagement that we did. And a lot of expertise, we're lucky as a city to have so many experts in the field uh, to shape specific goals. We, we describe it as a decathlon, so that whether it's climate or water or local food or environmental footprint, we're measuring across uh, basically 10 goal areas with 15 uh, specific targets. And we decided we needed to have metrics, we have to have a, a really clear uh, framework that we shoot for that we think will put us across that array of goals uh, in leadership position globally. And we, we are in some way, we have the cleanest air of any big city in the world right now. We've already secured first position and, and uh, we need to maintain that. We're, uh, we're nowhere near that with water consumption for, you know, for obvious reasons. It has not been a big priority to, to conserve water, so we are water hogs and we, uh, we have a lot more work to do to reduce the amount of water we use, which uh, may not have been relevant uh, too many years ago, but as we saw with the drought the other summer, it's, uh, we're not that far off of what many other cities facing water shortages are. So we have, uh, we have room to make up and to gain on, on a number of those goal areas, uh, but we're, we're, I think, reliably in the various studies from The Economist to uh, others. MIT just did one uh, and put us as the greenest city in the world based on tree canopy. <laughs> That's you know one piece of the puzzle. Actually, it's like one one fraction of one of our goals um, is around the tree canopy. It's a very important one for sure, but just having tree canopy doesn't make you the greenest city in the world. But at least by our definition. But it was nice to get the recognition. Um, that said, by our analysis, we have a lot of work to do on tree canopy. We've seen it go down below 20%, and, and a lot of trees lost. And we we changed the tree bio to protect trees and take out the, the rule that enabled people to cut down a tree a year in their yard. Uh, so we've, uh, we've made changes, some of which uh, have come under real pressure, to, to make sure that we are uh, the lead, among the leading cities in all of those different <laughs> disciplines. And we're tracking it, we've got a team tracking it. The, that is a good question. In 2020, will there be, will there be a, a rigorous, methodical exercise to assess all the cities of the world? I hope so. I, we've encouraged uh, The Economist and a couple other organizations to make this a, a regular exercise to push all of us, because uh, there are many cities that are striving to be the greenest in the United States or the greenest in Europe or, or the greenest globally in our case. And, uh, and it would be nice to have really solid, robust analysis of that by uh, independent parties. So we're hopeful we're going to see that in the years ahead. We've had a few examples of it. Um, for the time being, I think we're we're in the top 10, and uh, we've been steadily climbing on our competitors uh, in, in, in Scandinavia in particular. But we, we have a lot more work to do. These next couple of years are really important for catching up to the competition. And, uh, and, I, and I look forward to being 
thoroughly assessed on this in, in 2020 to see that we've achieved that goal. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, unfortunately, we are out of time. I, I'd love for this to go on for a couple more hours, but we're going to be respectful of your time at 7 o'clock. It's time to go home for dinner. Uh, so I just want to thank both of you personally. This has been a great experience for me. Great to listen to both of you. And uh, I hope you will join me in thanking our students.